Hey there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and although this is going to be a video about naked eye astronomy I thought we'd come out before the sun set as you can see it's just heading down over the hill there so that I can give you a look around in the daylight because this has been one of my favourite astronomy places over the last few years and well, I mean just take a look at that and well, we'll come back later on when it's dark you can see the moon just up over the trees there see how far that gets by the time it's dark and we're back here before I even got to the jetty, amazingly, when I say about seeing wildlife everywhere, this is what I mean. Well then folks, there you have it. Before we even got uh, down to some proper astronomy, we've seen a hedgehog and about one minute ago I'd say, right above us, I know you can't see anything on the camera, a good, perfect, really orange looking meteor went straight across the top. So. The moon is now over there. Originally it was well over to the left when we were here in the daytime. Um, and well, I suppose I'll just share a few tips. Um, well, you can see here it is very dark. There's a little bit of light pollution back towards the town. And well, obviously with the moon up, it's not the perfect astronomy conditions for general star observing, which basically you want as little light pollution as you want as you can so that obviously means leaving the towns and getting a few miles out um, you might be able to hear the traffic on the roads there's a main road about half a mile away and I don't know well in fact there's something coming down the country lane right on cue to disturb the peace um, so anyway I suppose the few tips that we need to share like I say you want as little light pollution as you can and obviously the moon being up tonight that's pretty much the biggest source of light pollution that there is if we come across here you'll always want to fetch a red light out with you because it gives you um, well it helps save your eyes and you don't want to look directly into the light because that um, destroys your night vision basically I'd say after about 20 minutes or so your eyes will have settled into the dark and you'll start to see more stars than you see originally when you come out you'll probably notice that even after five minutes of being out and if you're thinking where am I going to get a red light from well here pretty much sums it up it's right here the back light of me bike so that's one that's literally always with you um, for this video I'm going to film I'm afraid with a, a pure bright white light from the front of me bike if I can find one <laughs> there we go and basically this will help the camera pick me up a lot better so as you can see we are right here as I showed you before on the uh, jetty and well don't step too far over that way and of course the bike and well if we flip this around there how's that for you hopefully not too dramatic now you can probably see that it is very cold out here I hope I'm in shot <laughs> and well obviously in that case you, if you're out in the cold you're obviously going to want a uh, short uh, shorts uh, gloves and bits and pieces like that just to keep you warm fetch a blanket if you're intended to be out a while and when it comes to hats you don't want anything with a peak because that cuts off obviously the top half of your vision so something like well just good old-fashioned woolly hats i suppose balaclava definitely if it gets very very cold I will do a, a proper video where I show you the sort of things that you can see with the naked eye in terms of astronomy and I'll upload that in the next couple of weeks but um, something that's a good uh, starter I know you can't see any of this but just keep hoping for a shooting star or something now the plough is an excellent constellation that's the sort of famous one looks like a saucepan if you will um, and basically that for naked eye astronomy I use that as a good marker of how good your light conditions are and basically the plough is about half the stars of the larger constellation is the major and that's the one that really looks like a bear I'll draw a proper picture and show you in another video but if you can see the arms and legs and head of the bear that all come off the plough then you know you've got some excellent astronomy conditions I can see most of those extra stars very faintly so we're pretty good out here um, and well I suppose if I give you another look up into the sky just in case the <laughs> million to one chance we see something um, what have we got that off the top of my head what we can see even with the moon out you can see the uh, sort of misty milky line of the Milky Way the edge of the galaxy of just 
goodness knows how many millions of stars throwing their light out in a little track across the top of the sky. Um, just above the moon there is Aquila, then right at the absolute top we have got uh, Cygnus, then coming down Cassiopeia, one of my absolute favourites. Uh, below that um, you've got uh, Perseus and across from that Andromeda the constellation and I'm looking and very very faintly I can see the Andromeda galaxy as well. Um, there's a very twinkly bright star over there which I'm not sure of its name, I think it might be uh, Capella. Well this road seems incredibly busy, I apologise uh, people for this. <laughs> um, but uh, that is a uh, Capella when it's very low to the horizon is a very bright star and it's one like Sirius when that's up that twinkles all different colours and you can really see the blues and the reds flash in it. Um, that's part of the constellation of Riga. Um, like I say, if you come around to this side you've got uh, the Plough, Ursa Major, whatever you want to call it, and then Ursa Minor which contains Polaris the Pole Star just above that. And well, like I say, we've got a good few um, constellations visible. Uh, I can see the huge square that makes up the main body of Pegasus as well. Can't see all of the stars um, lower to the horizon because of a little bit of light pollution. Hey, there's a couple of uh, safety tips that are very important. Now obviously if you're coming out to the middle of nowhere and when the moon's not up as well, which is the best time to be doing this, it's exceptionally dark out here sometimes. So depending on where you're going, you're going to want to make sure that you watch out for the various pitfalls and things that you might run into such as barbed wire fences or potholes or any uneven ground like there is up here. Oh yes, that's a very nice feature of this torch. You can literally zoom and focus the beam really brightly in a perfect square as you can see there. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, back to the safety tips. This is important stuff. Um, obviously, I mean, in this case, coming here, You've obviously going to be paying a lot of attention because it gets very cold and the last thing you want to do is walk over here and end up in the pitch black falling into god knows what murky water is there. So that's something to be very careful about. Just your general surroundings, make sure you know that you're not going to walk into any barbed wire or well any sort of obstacle, anything like that basically. Um, in a similar theme you're going to want to make sure that somebody knows where you're going and obviously the route that you get in there. I mean, in this case, because I've biked down here, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Everybody knows which way I'll have gone, straight up the country lane and over the main bypass bridge. So just make sure somebody knows where you are, how you've got there, how you're getting back and what time you should be expected back. Now, I don't want this video to turn into an audio podcast where basically I'm talking over a blank screen. So let's step back up onto the grass and try and find that hedgehog again. Um, and while we do, I'll just say that the things that you're really going to want to look out for, apart from the stars when you're doing naked eye astronomy, are obviously shooting stars. And well, even after all this time, I mean, I've probably seen well over a thousand over the last few years. I just absolutely love them and seeing that one a few minutes ago once again I just can't get enough and every time I see one it's like oh wow look at that um, the best one I ever saw was very very low and burning up in the atmosphere and well it seemed to be traveling really slow because of the weird angle that I must have been looking at it from and well incredibly it was glowing and like just very very bright see even now looking back I'm excited talking about it but it was grow glowing incredibly bright and well as it got lower and seemed to sort of well I suppose burn up more it just turned into an incredible really bright green glow in the sky and it was just well just well the most spectacular thing I've ever seen in the sky or in fact probably on the earth um so yeah, then obviously if you've seen a few shooting stars, something else you want to be keeping your eye out for are satellites. And the sheer amount of satellites there are up there is just unbelievable. I mean, I can literally sometimes see over 10, probably 13, 14 in about half an hour. And if you consider those are just the ones that I can see with the naked eye, I mean, well, if you could have telescope um, light collecting power, over the entire sky at any one time. I mean, my goodness me, who knows how many you'd see. And also, flipping heck, imagine how many thousands of stars you'd be seeing all at once. Um, so we'll step back down onto the jetty here. And 
like you say, I'm not sure if this video is any interest to anybody. Um, but I thought I would just come and do one because I've been saying I'm going to do some more astronomy videos. And well, now that the dark skies are coming very early, it's just fantastic to get out here. I mean, for me personally, to be able to be doing proper astronomy before 10 o'clock at night. Well, I think it's now probably about half 10. Um, I am enjoying it immensely. So I hope you've picked up a few uh, tips or just enjoyed this general chat about naked eye astronomy. I've certainly enjoyed being out here talking at you and I'm probably going to spend another half an hour, 45 minutes out here before I hop on the bike and head back. Um, stay tuned because I will do a proper video where I draw some pictures of the constellations and say what you should be able to see with the naked eye. And well, that'll go up online in the next couple of weeks. So I'll wrap it up here and say thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like the Facebook page, check out my other videos for a load more astronomy stuff, um, a load of reviews on beginner telescopes and a very enormous pair of astronomy binoculars from Celestron. Um, they're worth seeing just for the pure spectacle of 80mm lenses. And well, on that bizarre note, I think I will say thank you very much for watching. Have a fantastic night. And may your skies be clear. Farewell.